The Ryan Jesperson Show, weekday mornings at 9 on 630 Chad. It's 9.06, a good uh, Tuesday morning to you. It's May 2nd. If you were tuned in yesterday after the 11.30 headlines, you know that, that we were doing our best to cover a story that was developing at that time, essentially an, an emergency meeting uh, with Edmonton's Catholic school trustees that led to the removal of former chair Marilyn Bergstrom from her vice chair position. She'll no longer, uh, in addition, no longer represent the Catholic board with the Alberta School Boards Association. The meeting also led to an official reprimand aimed at trustee Patricia Grell. Now, these two, Bergstra and Grell, haven't exactly seen eye to eye with the rest of their colleagues on Edmonton's Catholic board. So this morning, we're going to cover this as best we can from a number of different angles. Coming up in about 10 minutes time, you'll hear from trustees Grell and Bergstra. But it's my pleasure this morning to welcome out of the gates the chair of Edmonton's Catholic school board, Laura T. Bear. Uh, Ms. T. Bear, thank you for making time for us today. No, thank you. What How prom- are you? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm doing all right, thanks. Uh, a little surprised, but but at the same time, I guess not surprised at all to see what's going down yesterday because it, there hasn't exactly been 100% cohesion with all the Catholic trustees. Is, is that an understatement on my part? Oh, I mean, everybody has an opinion and everybody has a responsibility to uh, bring forward some issues or some ideas. So sometimes they can be not... Um, not passed, and sometimes they get passed. So I guess it all depends on uh, board governance, and that's what we're responsible for is the students in the classroom. So for those that are tuned in and going, what on earth is Jesperson even talking about here? Maybe maybe it would benefit us all to rewind a little bit. Please correct me, uh, Ms. Tiber, at any point if you perceive inaccuracies in, in my summation of this. Essentially, the deal is graduating students, grade 12 students in the Catholic school system are required to complete nine credits of religious studies. If they don't complete the nine credits, they're prohibited from participating in commencement or graduation ceremonies. So trustee Marilyn Bergstra had requested discussion at a board meeting about this, floating the idea that maybe some alternatives could be found. The motion was removed from the meeting agenda, and then that led to yesterday's events. Have I have I summed it up accurately? Well, I think what happened is that when you when you take when you question the district um, with our Catholic our Catholic values, then you're kind of going against the teaching and beliefs of the values that we teach. And one of the things that, as a board, as a trustee, I guess, you can put any item on the agenda, and the item was on the agenda. But what happened was the board has a right and a responsibility when we approve the agenda, whether if we want to have the conversation, and the board chose not to have the conversation at that time. So when we removed it, the board made a decision. The board made a decision to not have the conversation. So once there's a board decision, then trustees are collectively responsible to go out and to communicate the the voice and to respect the decision of the board. But absolutely, all trustees can bring forward anything they want, but the board then has a decision to make. If... If that were true, though, I mean, with respect, that any trustee could bring anything forward, then uh, why was, I mean, why did the board decide to clamp down and not allow discussion on Ms. Bergstra's policy point? The board point? has done it on several items, though. It's not one item that this board has chosen not to allow on the agenda. What would what would be the harm or what would be the perceived, you know, harm in, in, have, in facilitating conversation on Ms. Bergstra's motion? Well, conversation on Ms. Bergstra's motion or any motion of the trustees, again, comes down to a decision of the board that they make. And every individual trustee that represents their constituents has a responsibility to allow an item on the agenda or to remove it. And that's governance. That's good governance. And if there is an item that does go onto the agenda for debate, then at that point, then you bring forward the views of your constituents who elect you. And then collectively, once that decision is made, that is the what gets 
that's the decision that gets communicated. But, yeah, like I feel, I feel kind of silly. I hope case. I'm not missing oh, the point. Sorry. But I guess if, if you're saying that, that the trustees are there to to represent their constituents and to bring conversation or de, or debate or or disputes or or you know shortcomings or perceived shortcomings in in operations to the table, it seems to me like Trustee Bergstra was prohibited from doing exactly that. And I, I I'm embarrassed if I'm missing the point you're trying to make. No, I don't think she was prohibited, but she did have it on the agenda. The board then made a decision. And what we did was that we we didn't want to have a discussion on that, and that's a decision of the board. Okay. Did you speak to Trustee Bergstra about this personally before the meeting yesterday? Uh, No, I had not. Um, The meeting request went out on Friday, and there was no conversation because there was no call. And then Friday, or sorry, Friday, the agenda went out. And then on Monday, we had the meeting. And the school act says that two days notice is what legally we're required to have. So we obliged by the law, and we did we did that. Okay, but there was no conversation with Trustee Bergstra either on or off the record about this leading into the meeting yesterday. No, no, she didn't. She didn't call me. Okay. Uh, what was it uh, that earned Trustee Grell the, the reprimand from the board yesterday? What was it specifically? It was about supporting... Um, the idea that what we have is advocating against our beliefs and values and having advocating against teaching the our, our values in our schools, in a Catholic school. And yesterday was about reaffirming our Catholic education and reaffirming to our stakeholders that we will stand up and advocate and protect Catholic education. So in other words, the, the fact that she said, and I'm paraphrasing to be clear, this is my paraphrase, she essentially said, yeah, like I'm open-minded to considering alternatives to requiring students uh, to complete these religion credit hours. That was essentially what it was. The board saying collectively, your position here, your open-mindedness on, on alternative arrangements is, I suppose, anti-Catholic or against what we stand for. Well, again, it goes back to advocating against teaching our beliefs and values in our schools. Did you have a conversation with Trustee Grell on or off the record before the meeting yesterday? No, again, she did not call me. You're the chair, though. I mean, I might expect you to call her. Well, I sent an email. Did she respond? Sorry. Uh, No. I got interesting feedback on the text line here. Uh, we're speaking to Edmonton's Catholic School Board Chair Laura T. Bear, um, and and it's across the map. Some are applauding you for this move, and, and some are condemning the move. And I'm sure that you've heard it all as well. What do you make of a broader or more general perception that this board is, if for all intents and purposes, dysfunctional? Well, I think what we saw yesterday was taking a leadership role, and we are accountable to our Catholic stakeholders. And taking a leadership role is what they've been expecting from us. And yesterday, that's what we did. So the leadership role was, was essentially, uh, and I'm trying to not ask this question in such a loaded way. I appreciate your availability I appreciate here. But, that. But yeah, you know, and I mean, and I want to be fair, and I want to, and, I, and that's my purpose in bringing both sides into this conversation. But essentially, what you're saying is it, it's leadership to clamp down on perspectives or initiatives that fall outside the priorities of the majority of trustees? No, it's leadership to address questions that has been raised in the public regarding commitment to Catholic education. And our statement yesterday was to reaffirm that our values of Catholic education, that what we teach in our schools, is what the parents expect from us. So essentially, I, I suppose the bigger message here, Ms. T. Bear, as well, is to students, graduating students, or would-be graduating students, if you want to graduate from an Edmonton Catholic school, you better complete those credits. Well, if you want to graduate from a Catholic school, because one of the great things about our schools is our grade coordinators do a lot of work working with our students in order to make sure that they have these graduating credits, whether it's math, English, religion. But there's options. You have options of taking summer school. You have options of taking in the classroom. You have different ways that you can complete your requirement. And that's a part of a Catholic education at Edmonton Catholic Schools. Hmm. To be uh, just for purposes of clarification here, Laura, can a student graduate without the religion credits? They just can't walk across the stage and participate in commencement? Correct. 
because Alberta Education still provides their diploma that gets mailed to them usually about June or July. And that's so, issued no, from... No, sorry, after July and August. Sorry, June, okay, so but that's August. that's issued from, like you said, that's issued from the Ministry of Education, not from Absolutely. Edmonton's Catholic Board. Absolutely, because there's still diploma exams that they have to pass and complete. And once you have those credits, that is what your diploma is. There is Religion 9 credits that you can get towards getting that diploma. But when you come to a Catholic school, parents expect religion to be taught. Ms. T. Bear, do you believe that there is adequate transparencies in the policies and regulations? For example, if a student applies to attend an Edmonton Catholic high school, do you believe that there is adequate information that would indicate to them that there would be a penalty? In other words, no participation oh, in I commencement? Oh, I don't think it's a penalty. <laughs> I don't want to say penalty. I mean, you don't think it's, it's a penalty? No, it's permeation, and that's what Catholic education is about. And our schools work really hard, whether it's through orientations, whether it's grade coordinators, that work very closely with our students and care about our students to make sure that they graduate. That's our mandate, is to graduate our kids from grade 12. So we obviously want to have them succeed, and that's why we have very high accomplishments with getting our high school graduation. Okay. Laura, is there anything that I haven't asked you about that you think is relevant or pertinent to this conversation that you'd like to say before we thank you for your time? No, no I just want to say, like, you know, reaffirming Catholic education is, is, our, is very important. And I want to make sure that Edmonton Catholic Schools is, is one of the best things about being in 2017 is because parents have choice. I appreciate your time this morning, Ms. T-Bear. Thank you for making yourself available. Thank you for talking to me. You bet. We've been having a conversation with the chair of Edmonton's Catholic School Board, Laura T. Bear. When we come back, the two trustees that found themselves in the crosshairs of their colleagues yesterday, Patricia Grell and Marilyn Bergstra, join me here on CHED. 921 on this Tuesday morning. Our thanks to Edmonton's Catholic School Board Chair, Laura T. Bear, for joining us. It's my pleasure now to welcome uh, to the program the two trustees that, that found themselves, uh, and I keep putting it this way because I think it's accurate, in their colleagues' crosshairs yesterday. Marilyn Bergstra joining me here in studio. It's nice to see you, Marilyn. It's wonderful to see you. Thanks for having me, Ryan. And your colleague, uh, Patricia Grell, joining us over the phone. Patricia, good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for making time for us. Marilyn, you were listening to my conversation uh, with Ms. T-Bear. Generally speaking, what did you make of what she said? Well, you know, rather than comment on what my colleague said, I will give my perception of what governance is. Sure. And, uh, you know, I think one of the great things about our country is that uh, we have democratic representation. And that means that we can bring issues forward. And sometimes those issues aren't comfortable and sometimes they're controversial. But that's our duty as elected officials officials. And I also believe our, our duty as elected officials is to discuss issues and listen to what is being presented with an open mind and ask ourselves, are, are there new ways of doing things? Are, are we doing things the, the in the best interest at this time? Um, I'm not suggesting that intentions on, on any issue are ever um, from a, a position of, of, uh, of a negative position, but, you know, certainly it's through conversation and diversity of thought that new ideas are presented and new ways of doing things. So um, I would argue that good governance is in fact um, being open to conversations and I, I know of no board or no other political office that would um, advocate shutting down conversations and so um, to me, uh, I think we need to continue to talk, but I'm also, um, I am concerned about how this has been spun because at, at no time did I ever suggest that religion was not important um, and that our students need not take religion. What I suggested is is that um, faith should be inspired, not bartered for, and that the practice of suggesting that a non uh, required course by government um, should not be tied to um, one's ability to participate with in graduation with their peers. Trustee Grell, you were not at the meeting yesterday. How come? <laughs> because apparently the email went out at 3 o'clock on Friday. I was attending um, uh, a conference, the Alberta Council Conference on the weekend, and I, I didn't expect there to be emails 
um, over the weekend. Uh, I thought the office was closed, um, so I didn't check on Sunday. And then I have another job. Uh, a job is pretty uh, trustee, I'm really sorry to do this. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have you work with Gina and Kelsey to figure out a solution because we can't. I can't understand you. Uh, we can't hear. And I, this is she's talking about something incredibly important here. Uh, trustee Bergstar, this is this has been uh, a common theme. The two of you versus the rest of the Catholic School Board, including in your time as chair. What, what is it about the dynamic of this board? I mean, I, I asked what I believe to be a fair question to the chair, to Ms. T. Bear, is this board dysfunctional? Is it? Well, I'm not going to... I'm not the one that should be um, commenting on that. Why not? I think... Because it's not my position. My colleagues were elected by um, the constituents of their ward, and they will show their support in their conduct during the next election. Um, I don't think my colleagues should um, critique me, and I don't think it's my duty to critique them. I think that that is in the hands of the electorate, and I think we have treaded into that zone where um, elected officials are, are essentially policing other elected officials, and, and that just doesn't bode well for, for myself. I also think that I have brought, and as Patricia, we are very progressive, and I'm not suggesting that, that we're in the right and somebody else is in the wrong, but there's definitely a difference in how we see and perceive things. And um, I... I wish that there was more acceptance for diversity in thought, but I honestly don't don't feel that there is. And and even yesterday's actions lead me to believe that rather than embracing a diversity of, of thought and having those conversations, it's just um, shut down. And uh, but I, I, if you like, I can speak to the whole. Uh, why was Patricia not there? Yeah, because I mean, it, it was similar. It sounds to me, me like she didn't know there was a meeting. So uh, normal protocol is that yes, that there's uh, a, a time period that they have to give notice on a special board meeting. And uh, like she said, the email was sent late Friday afternoon. I didn't see the email either, but. In, in the past, whenever there's been a special board meeting, if the corporate secretary does not get a response back, um, she normally calls the trustees uh, personally to ensure that they've gotten that. I woke up Monday morning having no clue that there was any such special board meeting, and it was only via Twitter that it it came to my attention. Uh, let's let's try this again. Trustee Grell, can you hear me clearly? Yeah. Yes, can you hear me okay? Yeah, well, a little bit better, yeah. It, it sounds okay. like you're 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> Gina's telling me, are, are, you, are you locked in a stairwell right now? No, no, I'm, I I got out of the stairwell. Okay, <laughs> this is great. This is nice and clear. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for a little bit of overtime with you, if that's okay, because I want to okay. make sure that you, So what we'll do is we're going to get to the headlines in a couple of minutes from now, and then we'll pick okay. up this conversation again. But Trustee Grell, I mean, just generally speaking, so it, it wasn't a point of protest that you were not at the meeting yesterday. It's more like a technical, no, you didn't no, realize. Just, okay. I okay. didn't know until Trustee Bergster called me and, and said, did you know about this meeting? And I I was on my way to work and I said no I I had no idea like I was uh I was shocked and I I w- expected that if there was an issue that they would call and and ask you know is what Janet French said is, is that correct is that what you said you're talking about the post media reporter yeah what was it in Ms. French's <laughs> report that, that it sounds like you're taking issue with well she she made it sound like I was um that I thought oh students should opt out should be able to opt out. I said much more than that. Um, I first of all, opting out is in the school act. It's in section fifty. Secondly, um, the the idea is that uh, students should not be forced into taking a, a course that um, you know for for non legal reasons. It's 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 very unfortunate that they're using religion as a threat almost like. But what would you say, Trustee Grell, to the... It's not even in the school act. There are listeners right now saying, hey, if you don't want to complete the religion credits, then don't go to Catholic school. What would you say to them? Well, it's in the school act that you can go to a Catholic school, you can have your parents write a letter and exempt you from taking the the classes. 
so you know like that's that's the this that's the legislation um people can and it's in ontario as well students can attend our schools and not take religion courses that's the, the law if they don't like that then maybe they need to talk to the uh government and have that changed in the school act but the fact of the matter is these are 100 percent publicly funded schools and you um you have that option to take the religion classes or not and what our district is doing is, and it wasn't clearly stated in my um, uh, interview uh, with Janet French, is that they, they should be transparent about this policy. Like, if you're going to say that you need to have grad in order to graduate, or you need to have these classes, nine credits, in order to graduate uh, with your friends, then put it in the policy. It's not in the policy. It's, it was verbally stated to my son at his school. It's written in a handbook in another school. And, and then I'm told, um, here comes a street sweeper. Um, okay, you know and, what? Hang on. That, I have to break know, for the news anyway. Clear. So let's eh? let, let, the, let the street sweeper work. Okay. We're going to go top up our coffees, <laughs> and we'll be back with more. Trustee Patricia Grell, Trustee Marilyn Bergstra with me here on 630 Ched. My guest in studio, Edmonton Catholic School trustee Marilyn Bergster, joining us over the phone, trustee Patricia Grell. Both of them uh, reprimanded yesterday. Trustee Bergstra, you were removed from your position as vice chair, also as representative of the Catholic Board in Edmonton to the Alberta School Boards Association. Your response to that, was it, was it an emotional day for you? Do you even care anymore? Um, yeah, it um it of course it affects you, but um, I um, I tried to take a logical approach, and you know I here's here's the options before me: be continue in my role in as vice chair and be silent, or uh, potentially lose that position, but be the voice and advocate of students. And if I have to take a choice or choose between the two, I will always choose the latter. And I think you know, I don't shy away from issues. I'm not a fence post sitter and I don't respect politicians who, and and again, I'm talking in general terms, but in election years, politicians like to sit on the fence. They like to, you know, keep the waters calm and, you know, just try to get through the year quietly. Well, you know what? I'm paid for all all the years in which I'm elected, right up until the day of that election. And so my my duty is to bring issues forward. Even if I have a difference of opinion on the issue, I bring those issues forward. Trustee Grell, you've been swimming against the stream, I, I think, in your tenure uh, as a trustee on this board. How do you perceive or how will you move forward? How are you interpreting the, the magnitude or significance of the reprimand that was handed down to you yesterday? Well, this is part of the course. Um, I didn't get elected to be a cheerleader. I, I got elected to make a difference. That's why I ran, was to make a difference. So, um, you know, I, I didn't expect to be um, reprimanded for standing up for a transgender student. Um, I, didn't get, I didn't expect to get reprimanded for um, speaking up uh, when I saw one of my colleagues uh, 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 which I believe was in a conflict of interest um, in voting on the superintendent's contract. Um, I didn't expect to get reprimanded for uh, statements in an article that I feel were not complete. I wished uh, that um, they would have talked to me. Like, you know, just talk to me first. Every Tr- time I've been reprimanded, it's been um, an ambush, <laughs> basically. Uh, I, I found out through the grapevine that, oh, they're, you know, they're on to you now. They're going to have this meeting, and, and I'm, I'm in the dark about what's this meeting about. And, you know, it, it's, it's, just, uh, it's just unfortunate that if, if I'm doing something that the rest of the board has a problem with or the chair has a problem with, phone me. <laughs> Please phone me. And, and and tell me what your concerns are. Maybe this last uh, issue with with the um, 
the article with Janet French, I could have explained it, that my answer was much more nuanced than was expressed in the article. Well, and Trustee I, Grill, I listen, here, here's, and you, you've brought that up several times, so here's the deal. We, we've got the luxury of time here on this talk radio show. What, of your perspective, was not reflected in reporting around your position here? What would you like to develop as a thought or articulate? My, my biggest issue was transparency. I said, I don't know how many times, Janet French, we need better transparency around this policy. We have one school orally stating to students that they have to finish nine credits in order to go to grad. We have another, uh, says it in the, in the student handbook. It's not in our policies anywhere or our regulations anywhere. It just says that it's nine credits are required. It doesn't say anything about being barred from graduation. All I was trying to say to Janet French is put it in was we need better transparency. If you're going to have this policy, let everybody know about it. So, and, and put it on the registration form, um, at high, the high school registration form. So when people register, they know what they're getting into. That's all I was trying to say. That never made the paper. And I, I mentioned it how many times to, to Janet French. I, so, I, I haven't even got to the text line here. I can tell you we've, we've already got like four pages of text messages. There's 50 per page, so 200 messages from listeners. And, Marilyn, you can see the text line. They're each paragraphs long. People are very passionate about this. But there's a common theme to many of the messages, and that is what would be the big deal about discussing this at the board level? And and I even, in my conversation with Ms. T. Bear right out of the gates today, fail, and I remain unable to understand where the harm would have been in talking about mm-hmm. this. That, that to me, and I, and I don't feel like I have a sufficient or adequate answer as to why the board could not discuss this. Marilyn, do you agree? I do, and I don't understand it either. I mean... I don't understand the harm that comes out of having a healthy debate or discussion. Exactly. I, you know, you, I'm baffled. I'm baffled by it. Patricia, I mean, go ahead. Well, I heard John Tompkinson. He's the uh, vice vice chair of the Alberta Catholic School Trustees Association. Heard him on the radio one day uh, a couple of years ago, and he talked about the church is a monarchy, and I never really thought of it that way, but it is. It's a monarchy. There's the the, you know, the archbishop, the bishop, the, you know, there's this hierarchy. And you listen to the guy above you. And, and I, I think that our Catholic schools, because of that culture coming from a Catholic church, think of themselves as a monarchy. And they're not. They're a democracy. We were all elected um, in, in a municipal election. Um, we, we don't take um, our orders from above. We discuss things. We bring things forward and we discuss things. And so I think this is just my understanding of why this is happening is there's, it's a monarchy. <laughs> and there's Who's the monarch, people, trustee? Well, I, I would suggest uh, Laura Tebert at this point is, is at the top. And she's, she and, uh, and, and, you know, her the, the, uh, the people who think like her. You got to follow the church's teachings, and and you know, come hell or high water. And this, but we're trying to talk about an issue here in relation to um, uh, religious education in our schools and how it's being implemented. It shouldn't be a carte blanche. We can't talk about this. That's what a monarch does. So you know, Ryan, um, if if you think about it, if you don't have discussions. Nothing ever changes. So if you're not willing to entertain discussion, then the big, bigger question is, what is the purpose of Catholic boards in this province? That's it, yeah. And, and so I, I ask myself, like, how can I be effective? And you know what? Even on this issue, people are very divided on this issue. It's not black and white, and it is a gray issue, and I do see both sides of it. And... Um, it doesn't mean, though, that we don't have the conversation. I'm curious to know if, if either of the two of you or if both of you think that you can actually continue in your roles as trustee up until your term ends in October. That's the question we'll get into right after this quick break. We're talking to Edmonton Catholic School trustees Patricia Grell and Marilyn Bergstra here on 630 Ched. 
Edmonton Catholic trustees Marilyn Bergstra and Patricia Grell, my guests here following a conversation with Edmonton's Catholic Board Chair Laura Tiber earlier, this stemming from an emergency meeting called yesterday. Uh, that's where Trustee Bergstra was stripped of her vice chair position, no longer representing the Catholic Board to the Alberta School Boards Association. Trustee Grell earning herself a reprimand. On the text line to 63630, Hodge says the bishop is the one that's manipulating uh, the chair. The bishop is the monarch, just saying. Another says these two don't seem to accept anything if it doesn't go their way. If there are board debates, you know, they don't like the results, they run to the press and whine. Listener to Red Deer says because the discussion on this point, it would be less than pointless. Catholicism is not a democracy. There's a set theology, and if you can't get on board, step away. Another says these two are champions for change, and I applaud them. The other board members need to get into the 21st century. Listener to Camro says there should be just one school board, period. There's no place for religion in schools. Based on the two of your experience as Edmonton Catholic trustees, do you still believe in the validity of separate school boards, both funded with public dollars? Marilyn, you first. I absolutely do. And um, I'm glad you asked that question because I want to say that uh, we de- we deliver an amazing product. We have amazing teachers that go above and beyond every day. And in terms of a workload, there is is there is no more of a noble profession than what a teacher um, represents in terms of uh, occupation. And they 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 see some of the hardest things in life you know they they have to deal with kids that are neglected and abused and they wrap their arms around them and they they love them and they care for them and so with respect though that's not an argument for two school boards right no one's going to deny that teachers are important well but okay fair enough but how about this i mean the the reality is is when you have two boards it raises a healthy competition and when you have two boards with healthy competition it raises the bar it continue you continuously uh s- move forward looking for innovative new curricular uh, ways of doing things and and delivering product to your students so I think that it does serve a great purpose, but I, at the same time, we're in a democratic society and we are governed by boards. And it, if we can't wrap our heads around that, then we have to change that governance structure. And tr- uh, Trustee Grell, do you agree or disagree with what your colleague just said? Well, I, I have a different take on it. Um, I really struggle, um, as you know, uh, with the idea of paying our uh, superintendent uh, as much as we do um, and is one of the reasons why I was interested in not renewing. Um, I, I struggle with uh, the duplication in cost. Um, I think the idea of having one school board with a Catholic program uh, under a public system uh, would probably work fine. We have Christian schools right now that, that operate this way. We have Jewish schools that operate this way. Um, I, I don't see, we have, I, I'm not sure if we have an Islamic program or if that's a, a private uh, school, but it's, there's a possibility of doing that. And I know that there's many different ways that Catholic education is being uh, provided in our um, province. And right now, I know of public districts that are doing this. They do have Catholic uh, schools under their umbrella. And I know, like, for example, in Beaumont, they have Catholic schools now, but they also have um, Catholic uh, catechism classes within the public system. So, and, and this was a, a model, the, the idea of having a catechism class at the 30 minutes at the end of the day. That was the original model um, of Catholic education in our province. And eventually, when there was enough students there was a, a, for a, a separate school, then that was provided as well. So there's, like, there's different ways of doing this. And personally, I would like to see less duplication and more money going into the classroom. If we can do that, I think we're really serving our students. And that's, that's why I'm saying all this, is how can we best serve our students? And I see lack of resources going to um, our, our special needs kids, to our kids with learning disabilities. And I see that it's money is better spent on them than on a, 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 a separate school superintendent salary. Uh, Patricia, this probably isn't the first time you've heard this. Uh, several listeners are suggesting that 
when it all boils down, you're just not a good Catholic. How would you respond? <laughs> you know what? I think I'm too good a Catholic because I see um, putting the money into action. Um, I like to see money going towards um, providing uh, assistance, uh, educational assistance in classrooms. Um, to, to kids who are really struggling. I think that's being a true Catholic and following our religion to a T, looking after the most vulnerable, that's following the gospel. <laughs> uh, if, if I would prefer to have the money put there rather than to a separate Catholic superintendent, tell me, which one is more Catholic? Hmm. Is we'll it be... following, following what the gospel is in looking after the most vulnerable students? Or taking care of someone else's salary, just to ensure that we have a separate um, Catholic superintendent. That's Edmonton Catholic trustee Patricia Grell, her colleague Marilyn Bergster with me here in studio. When we return, where do they go from here? And do either of them seek re-election in October? We'll be right back. We've got just three minutes left with Edmonton Catholic trustees Marilyn Bergstra and Patricia Grell. Trustee Grell, you have five months left in your term. You've just earned yourself a reprimand, if I might put it that way. Do you believe Another you can... Another one. <laughs> Another one, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if congratulations in order are in order or not. Do you believe you can continue to function in your role, and will you seek re-election in October? I absolutely think I can continue to... Uh function in my role. I was elected for four years and I'm going to see it out. I'm still discerning whether to run again. Um, it's certainly a challenge. Um, I, I, I really struggle. Um, I really struggle with the culture of the district. Um, not so much the teachers and the students, they're great, but the administrative culture. Um, I think there's, uh, since I got elected, the idea was that we as trustees um, should be followers um, and not leaders. And every time I try to assert myself as a leader, I found myself constantly uh, uh, encountering obstacles. And I guess uh, it does make me wonder, you know, why are we elected then? If every time you turn around, the board secretary is saying, no, you can't go to school. Um, uh, you've got to talk to the, the superintendent. The superintendent will send out the invitation to the, the principal, and it's up to the principal whether you come in. That is a fact, that, that right from the get-go, I was not allowed to go to schools and it, it, just go to a barbecue and talk with people. No, nope, had to wait until I was invited by the principal. Well, if you're not going along with everybody, you don't get invited. And uh, so it's a, it's a very difficult culture to be in, and so I'm, I'm discerning. I, okay. I truly am. Uh, Trustee Bergstra, I know that you have some unfinished business. You'd like to see mandatory vaccinations for students attending Catholic schools. I know you'd like to see an updated, uh, uh, and, and you called it evidence-based change to the sexual education curriculum. Will you seek re-election in October? I absolutely will. <clears throat> and when I, I went into this, I when I ran for Edmonton Catholic, I didn't say to myself that all I will be focused on is faith. Um, for me, uh, this is still an educational institution institution and I have to balance faith with academics, with the health and well-being of the students and with the risk management of the organization. And I will continue to be that health advocate for students. I will continue to um, examine uh, risk risk management to protect uh, the district from um, liable situations and ensure that we're doing our due diligence in that respect. So um, as, as tough as it is, and um, I think uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Trustee Grell, has articulated the environment quite well. Um, I, I want to be that voice. It is a gift to be able to be the voice and to take on the tough issues on behalf of students who have a democratic right to have somebody represent them. Thank you for joining me here in studio. Sure, appreciate your time. Trustee Grell, Thank thanks you. for making time for us as well into uh, a longer I'm period have than to we work requested. Saturday to make up for the time. <laughs> hey, well, there you go. At least you'll be checking your email. You won't miss any more meetings. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's Trustees Patricia Grell and Marilyn Bergstra here on Chad. The Ryan Jesperson Show, weekday mornings at 9 on 630 Chad.